Two's a company, but three's a crowd. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie love triangles. For this list, we'll be looking at the most memorable triple love entanglements in our favorite films. Be warned, there's a spoiler alert in effect. Yeah, we're all gonna be together now. Number 10, Gatsby, Daisy, and Tom, The Great Gatsby. One of literature's greatest love triangles translated well to the screen in Baz Luhrmann's 2013 adaptation of The Great Gatsby. All of Jay Gatsby's actions and lavish parties are an attempt to attract Daisy back to him, the girl he had been in love with before going off to war. But she's married to the wealthy Tom Buchanan. Mr. Buchanan, would you mind terribly? Of course not. I think I can keep myself amused. Gatsby and Daisy start having an affair after reuniting, and she plans to leave her husband for him, but tragedy intervenes, preventing the two lovers from having their happily ever after. They pinned everything on Gatsby. The affair with Myrtle, the hit and run, everything. And there was nothing I could say. Number 9. Scarlet, Ashley, and Rhett, Gone with the Wind. Don't you want to marry me? I'm going to marry Melanie. But you can't, not if you care for me. Oh my dear, why must you make me say things that will hurt you? Long before she became a popular trope in modern media, Scarlett O'Hara was something of an anti-hero in Gone with the Wind, the hugely popular film based on the book of the same name. Throughout the story, she toys with the affections of two men, Ashley Wilkes and Rhett Butler. And I hope to see more of you when you're free of the spell of the elegant Mr. Wilkes. He doesn't strike me as half good enough for a girl of your... Uh, what was it? Your passion for living? She's been in love with Ashley for ages, and Rhett is a newer figure in her life, but she seems incapable of figuring out which one is her actual true love. The ending of the movie is iconic, with Scarlett getting what many believe she deserved, ending up with neither of them. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Number 8. Susanna and the Ludlow Brothers – Legends of the Fall We're breaking the rules a bit on this one, because the romance in Legends of the Fall isn't so much a love triangle as a love square. Not only that, but it involves a woman and three brothers. Samuel brings home his fiancée Susanna to his family's ranch, and over time she ends up becoming intertwined with the Ludlows throughout the drama of the war. So this is Tristan. Samuel's brother Alfred ends up falling for her, but her heart ultimately belongs to his other brother Tristan. This is one messy story, but trust us, it's not quite as scandalous as it sounds. Number 7. Jack, Elizabeth, and Will – Pirates of the Caribbean Franchise while in the first film in the franchise, it seemed pretty obvious that Will and Elizabeth were totally together, things got a little more complicated in the sequels. You do know Will taught me how to handle a sword. As I said, persuade me. Initially, Will just had to win Elizabeth over from her stuffy fiancé. But by the second movie, he also had to compete for her affections with his old buddy, Captain Jack Sparrow. You came back. I always knew you were a good man. Viewers knew that the two young lovebirds that we fell for in the original movie were probably meant to be, but it definitely added some drama to their courtship. And we were devastated by the ending of the third film, when everything we'd expected was upended. Elizabeth Swan, do you take me to be your husband? Great! Number 6. Edward, Bella, and Jacob – The Twilight Saga We couldn't possibly have a modern list on love triangles and leave this one out. You're stronger than I thought. <sighs> yeah, I wish I could say the same. Love it or hate it, the Twilight franchise dominated pop culture for a number of years, with both the books and movies achieving striking popularity. And while Bella's romance with the vampire Edward was the main focus of the story, her relationship with Jacob became increasingly complicated as the tale went on. I'm asking you to kiss me. This spawned Team Edward and Team Jacob, although we think anyone on the latter team probably knew they were fighting a losing battle. And let's face it, I am hotter than you. The resolution to this triangle, though, was even more bizarre than anyone could have imagined. You imprinted on my daughter? It wasn't my choice. She's a baby! It's not like that. 
You think Edward would let me live if it was? I'm still debating it. Number five, The Phantom, Christine, and Raoul, The Phantom of the Opera. No more talk of darkness. Forget these wide-eyed fears. I'm here. The Phantom of the Opera is one of the most beloved musicals of all time and the longest running show in Broadway history. And it features one of the stage's most memorable love triangles. Touch me, trust me, savor each sensation. When the well-known story was adapted into a film in 2004, the producers made clear attempts to make the story palatable for modern audiences and put the tangle of romance into the spotlight. Twisted every way, what answer can I give? Christine is infatuated with the dark and mysterious phantom, but Raoul is her childhood sweetheart, and the quintessential nice guy who is obviously the safe choice. But what girl wants that? Christine, that's all! Four, Victor, Ilsa, and Rick, Casablanca. No, no. He's looking at you, kid. Perhaps the most well-known movie scene in all of cinema history takes place near the end of Casablanca, but many know the iconic lines without actually understanding the context. There must be some reason why you won't let me have them. There is. I suggest that you ask your wife. I beg your pardon? I said, ask your wife. Rick is pushing his former lover Ilsa to leave him and stay with her husband because he's trying to do what's best for her in an effort to keep her safe from the Nazis. She wants to stay with her former lover regardless, but they'll always have Paris. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. More than a decade later, Bogey was added again with another love triangle in Sabrina, where he co-starred with Audrey Hepburn. This is what you do on your very first day in Paris. Number three, Bridget, Daniel, and Darcy, Bridget Jones's Diary. In this 2001 rom-com, Bridget is a hapless singleton living in London who suddenly finds herself with two men in her life. But if staying here means working within 10 yards of you, frankly, I'd rather have a job wiping Saddam Hussein's ass. There's the dastardly Daniel Cleaver, who is her boss, as well as a total player. And there's the adorable, if ever so slightly dorky Mark Darcy, who plays the role of the nice guy. No, I like you very much, just as you are. There's an even bigger complication, which is that the two men used to be mates, but Bridget is unsure who to trust when it comes to the story of the dissolution of their friendship. It's dramatic, but also funny. Number two, Noah, Ali, and Lon, The Notebook. I want all of you forever, you and me, every day, <laughs> The Notebook is obviously all about Noah and Ali's timeless love story, but one of the ways in which it excels is by making the other guy a viable option, rather than a villainous figure. Lon is handsome, kind, and romantic, and for all intents and purposes, a great match for Ali. Damn it, I think you have to marry me. I think you need to marry me. I do? Yes, you do. do. But of course, some loves never die, and despite her great relationship with him, she'll always have a flame burning for her adolescent love, Noah. It wasn't over. It still isn't over. Despite the fact that Lon is just a foil, he totally holds his own as a character in this film. I love you, Ellie. But I want you for myself. Uh, excuse me, I'll gladly take James Marston off your hands, Allie. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Katniss, Gail, and Peeta, the Hunger Games franchise. You saved so many people, Gail. Without you, there'd be no District 12, not even the memory of it. Maria Elena, Juan Antonio, and Christina. Vicky Christina Barcelona. Of course I went to your luggage. First night I was in the house, I didn't trust you. I didn't believe you were who you said you were. I wanted to know who was really sharing the bed of my ex-husband. Michael, Julianne, and Kimberly. My best friend's wedding. But I really have this gigantic favor to ask of you. Choose me. Marry me. Benjamin, Mrs. Robinson, and Elaine, the graduate. Now you start opening up your personal life to me and tell me your husband won't be home for hours. So? Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> Juliet, Mark, and Peter. Love Actually. The 
before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rose, Jack, and Cal – Titanic Most love triangles feature a woman having a difficult time choosing between two men, or vice versa. But hey, there's really no competition in this love story. You jump, I jump, remember? I can't turn away without knowing you'll be alright. Rose is an upper-class woman on board the doomed Titanic with her fiancé Cal, who at first appears to be nice enough, but is slowly revealed to be cruel, selfish, and even violent. I'm fiancé! Yes, you are! And my wife! My wife in practice, if not yet by law, so you will honor me. Once Rose meets and falls for the penniless Jack, Cal is willing to do anything in his power to keep Rose for himself. But despite the fact that they certainly don't get a happy ending, Rose and Jack were clearly the true love story here, and Cal becomes the biggest villain that the movie had. Well, aside from the iceberg, of course. Never let go. I will never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.